About a year ago, I made this video informing you about useful tricks in Enlisted. However, Enlisted has changed massively over the past year, meaning there's so many different things that need to be said. And you guys wanted another. So, here's 35 more tips and tricks for new players and pros. Starting with number one, did you know you can get post-mortem kills in Enlisted? If you get downed but not killed in a battle, you should be able to see a button alongside the heal yourself button to get back up to drop a grenade. Do this if you know you've got no chance of getting to cover to heal or if you know you aren't getting back up. However, it does give the enemy a chance to pick up and throw away the grenade, possibly to kill your own teammates with it, and kill you at the same time. To prevent this, if you press and hold the drop grenade button, you can actually cook that grenade like you would as normal, and when you let go of the button, you finally drop it. The enemy cannot pick up the grenade if you are cooking it, and he can't see that you're cooking it, so he may get a nasty surprise if he sticks around for too long. But be careful, you can easily just end up killing yourself with it. For number two, the engineer savvy players of you will all know that you can build ammunition boxes to restore ammo for yourself and any of your teammates. But if you pick up an enemy's weapon, you can't use your own team's ammo boxes. This does not mean you can't refill its ammo though, as if you find an enemy ammunition box, you can actually use it to restock the ammo of the enemy's weapon that you are currently using. It's a very neat trick, especially if you really, really like that weapon. At number three, sticking with the engineer theme, did you know you could destroy an enemy's built structures more easily than by going up to them and holding the J key on keyboard? In fact, many with low hit points, you can actually just shoot enough times and it will be destroyed, like enemy rally points or ammunition boxes. For others, like machine gun nests, barbed wire or sandbags, you'll need to use an explosive, like an explosive pack, as they have more resistance and hit points. Tank trap hedgehogs though are too tough, you'll need to dismantle these manually, but they all give lots and lots of XP when destroyed, so if you can spare a few seconds or an explosive, it's definitely worth it. At number 4, many new players come to the game without having played War Thunder before, just like myself, so we're unfamiliar on how tanks really work, but one easy tip to know what each shell type does is to look at its icon. Most of them are self-explanatory, like rockets or machine guns, but you can also see here that one will detonate on impact, which is the anti-infantry shell, and one will penetrate through armour, the anti-tank shell. Make sure you have the corresponding one loaded for what kind of opponents you're up against at that moment. Speaking of explosions, are you playing in a match with constant explosive spam? <coughs> Normandy. <coughs> the best two ways to combat this are, one, to ensure Ensure you go prone before the explosion goes off by pressing Z on keyboard, that way you reduce the chances of being hit by shrapnel, and two, to put a non-destructible wall between yourself and the bombs. It might just save your life. And staying on the vehicle theme for number six, vehicles can have multiple different players inside them, let alone multiple different AI. It's a little finicky to do, but if your squad are all dead then this becomes significantly easier. You could fill your tank with so many different players in a tank like we did here, having entirely different players as the commander, gunner and a driver. This is so fun to do, trust me. At number 7, you may normally press F by default on keyboard for yourself and your entire squad to exit a tank together, and because your AI are often stupid, they can get themselves killed before you finish making repairs and enter back in. Instead, press J by default on keyboard to exit a vehicle alone while leaving the rest of your squad inside it. It may just help your big Tonka survive a little longer. In its 8th, have you ever wanted to queue up with more than just the 4 slots you have available in a party? To get a Around this, you can attempt to click start at the same time with another party, on the same server and same campaign, in order to have the highest likelihood to get in a game together, on the same or opposite team. We've done this many many times over on our Discord server, and it's the best way to try and get more exciting and interesting matches. So if you want to find loads of new teammates and super active voice chats, then you need to join it. The link to it is in the description. In ninth, most players already know that the scroll wheel menu when you hold the ALT key by default on keyboard has changed significantly, but it should now be much simpler. Doing so now, you only get all the actions you can order your own AI squad soldiers to do. If you press E after that, you open up the new quick chat scroll wheel, a very easy way to communicate with your team and plan the most important things whilst you're still walking. And if you press Q instead of E, you can put down any of the battle pass posters that you have, which is a little pointless, but if you want to show it off, it's there. Remaining with Soldier Squad organization themes, if you hold down the Y key, you bring up the Squad and Soldier Selection wheel menu. Here you can move your mouse or analog stick on console, then let go, to pick to play as a different soldier in your own squad. This is especially useful if you have a specific order you put your troops in for quick selection, as muscle memory can make this process super quick. Alternatively, you can just tap Y really quickly to play as the next soldier in your squad, which could be quicker. The 11th tip here stays on the same wheel menu, as here is also the new place where you can change your squad behaviour as a whole, such as whether to make them shoot everything they see, aggressive, or only shoot back when they are being shot at themselves, 
passive, alongside wide, narrow, or standard formations if you think your AI might save themselves by utilizing these. All these behaviors have a symbol just above your soldiers in the bottom left of your screen, so you remember exactly what orders you have on at any one time. And these behaviors for that specific squad do save for the next time you use that squad, even if you start a new battle entirely. In 12th, we talk about custom games. As many players are unaware how you can earn full XP by playing them, there's an image on screen now explaining how you can do so. But in general, the rule is that the fewer players playing, the less XP you can get, relatively speaking, to normal. Which actually makes sense, so you can't exploit farming bots to level up quickly. Number 13, no tip here, because it would be unlucky. But you know what's not unlucky? Subscribing to the channel. No, seriously, you'll get notified on other enlisted tips and tricks videos, so it is actually lucky. But actually for number 13, we see a very important tip. As your in-game score is directly correlated with how much XP you get per battle, it's not a perfectly positive relationship, as there seems to be diminishing returns to your XP from increasing battle score. But the biggest things that help you level up quicker are 1. Winning games, 2. Getting a battle hero award, and 3. Buying premium accounts, if you can afford it. So, if you're doing all of these things, then you will indeed climb the XP tree as quickly as you can. Number 14. Rally points. For the love of all that is holy, please build them. I swear, just please, just please do it. Just please, please, please. It's, it's just, there's nothing, there's no downside. Just, just do it, please. For the sake of literally everybody you've ever met in your entire life, just please, please do it. I beg you. And not only me, your teammates will also beg you. But, you know, I, I can't speak for them, I suppose. They are the number one most important thing you can do to win games of Enlisted. Hence, as in tip 13, level up the quickest to reduce the length of the ground. In short, they allow you to spawn closer to the objective point, meaning you can attack or defend it so much easier. My team won the first enlisted tournament with strategies that basically only revolved around where we were building our rally points at any one time. And if you're still unconvinced on how important they are, then watch my documentary on how we became the first enlisted tournament winners. Tip 15 is about how you don't even need to get the highest number of kills on your team to get to the top of the leaderboard in each battle. You can get significantly more score and appear still still at the top of the leaderboard with lots of vehicle kills, engineer score and lots of assists. Outright kills whilst on the objective, whether defending or attacking it, also allows you to get significantly more XP per kill, which is why it's so important to play on and around the objective point, and not sit at the back of the map sniping. If you're at the back of the map sniping and you're still complaining about the grind, then you're the problem not the grind. For tip 16, did you know that if you down an enemy but don't finish him off and someone else finishes him off, you will still get the kill. The person who finishes him off will get an assist, but you will still get the kill. And it will still be credited to the weapon you used in the shot that downed the enemy. This is important when you are trying to mow down an entire squad. It means you don't need to waste valuable seconds killing the downed enemies and should focus on the guys who are up. If someone else tries to kill steal the downed enemies, it doesn't matter. The same principle works works for your own AI, and it works backwards as well. As in, if you only deal the final blow, you will only get an assist. In 17th, you should tactically use the lighting, or lack thereof, in specific areas to camouflage you if your uniform fits. For example, a sniper covered in all white uniform running in the snow outside, or a Lewis gun soldier hiding in a corner of a dark room. Maybe even a brown uniform guy hiding in a trench, or a puny little American hiding amongst the grass. You'll never see them coming. Another tactical tip in 18th, you should think carefully about where you spawn next. Sometimes spawning at a rally point closer to the point isn't actually the best idea, especially if the enemy knows you are all spawning there and can continue to spawn kill you in a narrow corridor for example with a heavy machine gun. Perhaps it's best to spawn on the default spawn area and flank around the side. Use your brain to think how you can best win the game for your team by spawning, but in case you forgot about tip 14, always build a rally point, as these will help with this tip. And if you still don't know what these are, then you need to go and watch this video. In 19th, Flame Troopers are one of the best classes in the game, but they also have a unique ability. Fireproof clothing. They have a slightly stronger resistance to fire than any other troop, so after you flame up everywhere inside a bunker, it will take you a bit longer to catch on fire for yourself than other enemy classes. This extra breathing room allows you to run into that hot room and still light stuff up before dipping, though the flamethrower is still memed as the suicide class, so expect to die a lot with it regardless. Staying on the troop type theme for number 20, Sometimes early
earlier soldier class tiers can be better than later soldier class tiers. A prime example of this is Assault 3 versus Assault 2. Assault 2s will always have access to the 16 perk point perks, so for me there's no real difference between the two in terms of quantity of perk points, because I can get all the perks that I want anyway. However, Assault 2s have a better starting class tier perk, at least for me, of plus 35% stamina, whereas Assault 3s plus 100% health restored by med pack to me is simply just not as useful. So, funnily enough, Assault 2s are better than Assault 3s, at least for me. There are more versions of this though, but you should also check that each soldier class tier can always get the perks that you want them to, assuming they're perfectly rolled. Especially as if you prefer other perks to myself, then this becomes important, and may not even be true for you. In 21st, also known as the Swazi strategy, named after the streamer Swazi himself, you can place anti-personnel mines on enemy rally points if you find one. If you and your teammates run away from the rally points, it then allows enemies to still spawn there. Then some unlucky fella on the enemy team will spawn and instantly die as the mine activates, scoring you a free set of kills, anywhere from 3 up to 9, depending on the size of the enemy squad that spawns. Now this is exceptionally annoying and scummy, especially if you're on the receiving end, but one protective measure you can do against this is to place AP mines on your own team's rally points. This means when an enemy gets close to place one, your own AP mine activates and kills that enemy, but it does not blow up your own team's rally points. It also acts as a nice little informant to let you know if someone is trying to hunt your rally points. So basically, win-win. The 22nd tip is about artillery. There are now three different types of artillery, including normal precise artillery, an AI bombing run, or smoke artillery. Radio men placed in any squad can only call the standard precise artillery, but radio men in official radio men squads can call any of the three. When you press the 7 key when it's available, you bring up the map. If you press R, you can change the shell type. For smoke artillery, you can even drag on the map to make a line of smoke, which is extremely useful for attacking a point that's out in the open, and we did it many times in our tournament win documentary. In 23rd, did you know you can order your squad to do specific repetitive things that you may not want to do yourself? This includes ordering an AI squad mate to plant or defuse a bomb on the destruction game mode whilst you defend him, placing a structure with an engineer but getting your fellow squad mate engineers to actually build it, or ordering one to get rid of an enemy built structure. It can save you so much time and might actually save your life. The 24th tip asks whether you knew that you could shoot all of your own, your teammates, and your enemies, anti-personnel and anti-tank mines to detonate them. This is a very useful skill, as it allows you to place anti-tank mines next to tanks and blow it up yourself. You can even use anti-personnel mines if there's no crew left in the tank, as well as letting you clear out enemy minefields, for example when you're attacking a well-defended point, but also to troll your teammates, as my friend Tornado Boss recently did to me on stream. Bro! Tonight I just killed me with my own mind. Tonight I just killed me with my own mind, bro. 25th tells you to make sure you know the best gold weapons in the game, or the most fun ones, so you can make the best use of your extremely valuable gold weapon orders, even at a low campaign level. I also have a handy playlist for you reviewing many of them, but the names of some of the best ones as of today are the Gewehr 43 chambered for the Kurtz cartridge, the Suomi KP26, the PP Spitalny, the MKB42H, the Kernders MG, and the VMP1926. You can also switch these gold orders between campaigns and buy multiple of them. But Bear in mind, more good gold order weapons will be released in the future, so keep an eye on that playlist. In 26th, you know tanks can run over most structures with ease, but you know what they can't run over? Hedgehog traps. Get an engineer and build these in the most obnoxious places to annoy enemy tankers and waste their time going around it. You can even make it difficult for infantry to get to a certain point if this blocks a choke point. They can't be shot down nor exploded, and they take the longest time out of all structures to manually destroy when holding the J-key. So realistically, they're the most annoying thing you could build, I think. Wait, no, it's barbed wire. It is definitely barbed wire. Enlist its famous Lone Fighters game mode, or its hardcore mode, which has no HUD, no help, the ability to team kill, and no squads, playing as just one soldier, has been moved to the custom matches area. So head over there to play it. There's always full games going on, and a lot of top players like to play this to practice, as in theory, it's tougher than the common squads game mode. 28th talks about backpacks. When looking 
looking at the upgrade tree for certain squads. Under the red tree, it's almost always more beneficial to pick the backpack upgrade for each soldier's class over the secondary weapon upgrade at that decision node. Secondary weapons must be a different weapon type, otherwise they will use the same ammo as your primary weapon and be almost worthless. And often that secondary weapon you would have to choose as a result of this uh, isn't great. The backpack though preserves your options, allowing you to either add more grenades, med packs or ammo, depending on what you prefer. Is your plane damaged and on the verge of going down? For the 29th tip, try to get back to the map and time your plane exit with a parachute in order to drop behind enemy lines. If done right, it can be extremely useful to backstab enemies, destroy rally points or wreak havoc completely unexpectedly. For the big 3-0, if you're struggling with your PC, PlayStation or Xbox to run enlisted well, then you need to watch this video on how to change that and which graphical settings to reduce for maximum impact. It also has a full section on general PC performance improvement tips, so it's very detailed trust me. In 31st, watch the best enlisted streamers and YouTubers around to improve your game knowledge and decision making. This includes tournament winners like myself. Duh, go follow my Twitch channel. It's in the description. You should follow it. I know you should. Where you can watch me play intense battles and also ask any question about the game to me live on Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays. But in case you dislike me for whatever reason, and I don't know why you would, you can also watch other popular content creators like Hey Quadro or Enlightened Enlisted, or other renowned good players like Swazzy, Snowy Sentinel, Zaccaroni, Panda, H Joey, Paradivision, J Dosser, Napoleon Total, Romich, the list goes on. Our Discord server has some insanely helpful people answering questions too, and you can also learn a lots for my brand new podcast, The Rally Points, and the first episode will be uploaded to this channel shortly. In 30 seconds, use your bayonet instead of changing to your knife melee weapon. Most rifles, semi-automatic weapons, and some full auto weapons have bayonets attached to them, and if they have them, it makes this weapon 10 times more valuable. This is because bayonets are instant kills, yet using the butt of your weapon or a knife manually takes multiple thrusts which might get you killed. Axes, swords, and shovels are also instant kills, so basically anything is better than the standard knife you get on all troops. But the bayonet is the most valuable, as you don't need to waste valuable seconds switching to your melee weapon, in a similar vein for 33rd, to save yourself on silver weapon orders. Only spend them on melee weapons that actually allow you to utilize the charging mechanic, which allows you to run significantly faster for a period of time, extended with a flask. Weapons with bayonets, axes and swords allow you to charge by holding the middle mouse button on PC by default, but knives and shovels do not. Having a bayonet equipped weapon therefore, once again, is so valuable, as you don't need to waste extra silver orders on an axe or sword for this capability, and it does more damage as in the previous tip. Two away now, but in 34th, in the Tunisia campaign, you only unlock the best troop class in the game, the Engineer, as level 5 now. This is still way too late, considering how important rally points are to winning games and levelling up quickly. Therefore, a little trick is, if you have a spare gold soldier order lying around, then my recommendation is to spend one on the Engineer class gold soldier in that campaign to unlock an engineer right from level 1. There are very few other gold order soldiers which are actually useful, which you can hear all about in this video. Therefore, I think it's very very important for those that haven't actually played the Tunisia campaign before. But remember, you need to unlock an engineer slot in one of your squads before you can put this gold order soldier inside one. And finally, in 35th, more of a cool immersion trick than an improvement tip to end it, but you can press default keyboard key I to make your currently used soldier talk or shout in the language your trooper speaks. It's actually quite cool, especially if you're a native English speaker and don't necessarily hear Italian, Russian, German or Japanese often. Come on! <laughs> yeah! So that's the full 35. Let me know in the comments which tips were missed out so you can help other players and also give this video a like if you learned something. As well as a special thanks to my supporters including Vendatrex, Narfalex and Akolo QE. You can also learn many different tricks from last year's episode and it's right there so you should watch it. And if this video goes viral again then I guess I'll make it a yearly series.